Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the most recent updates and upgrades to the Jackrabbit Relay system, including Equilibrium. Let's start by talking about Equilibrium and showing my current positions. All decimal places are now to eight digits. I've entered fairly sideways movement recently and it has done significantly well with the back and forth motion. Also, you can see an update to the command line where I have added the cell lot amount. Auto means it calculates 10% addition to the buying lot, but you can put in your own value if you want. For example, here I'm purchasing 10 lots. Auto would be selling of 11 lots, but if you put the number 10 here, then it would sell the same amount that it's purchased. There are different reasons for wanting to do this, such as wanting to do a small accumulation amount over time, or simply wanting to sell exactly what you've purchased without getting rid of some in your account that you might want to hold on to for a rainy day. So this is the most recent change to equilibrium. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and doing exactly what it needs to do to generate a reasonably consistent profit. Next, we are going to talk about something that was requested. The ability to track positions and limit the number of assets at any given moment to a specific number. Jackrabbit now has the ability through its place order modules to keep track of an exact number of coins. If you use this function, you will see it on the basis of the exchange and the account, and the contents will always be the list of the coins and an expiration number. You do not need to really worry about these numbers as the system handles it on its own. But if you delete this list by accident, it will regenerate. But if you were in the middle of a trade, it could mess up the trades if another coin makes it in that wasn't part of this list. Say if you have seven coins allowed and you're trading 20 different coins. If you delete this list, there's a good chance that one of the seven you were trading won't be in the new list. So care is needed here. Now, if you stop trading a coin that didn't close out on its position, the coin will be removed or aged out after seven days. Depending upon response and feedback, that might become something of an option, but for now, it's a fixed amount of seven days. So let's talk about the configuration file. Okay, it's not this one. Okay, we'll use this one. I'm going to zoom out again. 
Now, if you have multiple APIs, you simply need to, somewhere in this list, add this item, max assets. This tells this account ID that this account will be limited to seven maximum different positions. Oops. Of course, make sure you're in the right spot when you do your modifications and check everything. It must be on every single line that pertains to the same account. So whatever account you designate to have a fixed number of positions. Every API secret combo must have the max assets reference. Mm -hmm. It's that easy, and from there, Jackrabbit takes care of the rest of it automatically. Now, while I'm here, though, I want to bring up something specific to KuCoin. KuCoin requires a passphrase on top of the API and the secret. This must be exactly and explicitly as you gave it to KuCoin when you created this API. Now the dangerous part is each account reference, each API can have its own passphrase or you could have the same passphrase. It doesn't matter, but you must be exact and specific with your configuration or the account will not work. Now, also while I'm here, something else that I want to bring to attention, the webhook. You have to have a webhook in your configuration file for equilibrium to use relay if you use the 127 number this is to the local machine it's the fastest way of going without having to mess with your firewall settings but you must make sure the port number matches your relay installation do not use this port number unless this is the port you are using. I've had a lot of confusion on that and I wanted to make sure that I got that cleared up. The webhook must point to your Jackrabbit Relay installation. So now let's go in and save of course, exit, and there you are. Now I've made updates to the file update process and to the installer itself. I'm going to run it to demonstrate it. Okay. If you have manually installed Equilibrium one time, afterwards the updater recognizes it and automatically updates it as well. Okay, the place order script can now support more than one exchange at once. So put all of your exchanges on the command line one at a time separated by a space and it will update all of the exchanges at once. Okay, let's bring up the uh, 
file manager again. Okay, the grid files have been updated so that your exchange, your account, the coin, and the word grid. This has been done so that now Equilibrium supports subaccounts. Subaccounts are important because pretty soon Equilibrium will have long and short versions for perpetual usage. The grid file, of course, is exactly as I've described many times over. If you accidentally delete your grid file, as long as Equilibrium is running, it will regenerate it. But there is a good chance it will reset the current trade cycle and recalculate it. So it's not something you want to do, but it's not catastrophic if it happens on accident. So be aware that it can have an impact, even though it's not really devastating. The other thing that has been brought to this upgrade is a stop file. You'll notice it is the same exact as the grid file, but the word grid says stop. So what that means is that when Sushi either burns off the budget to the point that it is below the minimum or the tier level or depth of the system returns to zero, this process will come to an end. It will stop. And that is an important factor if you only want to get out of the coin once and for all. This is important. So this will let you get out of the coin completely after you've sold it off. So it makes Equilibrium now the perfect recovery vehicle for an asset that was just a nightmare to begin with. It's still going to be painfully slow and painfully tedious, as you can see from my own position sizes here. But at least now there is a framework to cleanly and neatly exhaust its volume and in a profitable way. So that pretty much covers all of the major updates done to the system. The only other update, and that is with regards to the list file of the placeholder system for tracking, maintaining, and coordinating the expiration times of the various coins. This tool will let you keep track of the coins and when they age out. Now this number is an aging rate in days. After seven days, if the coin does not close out on its own, it is aged out by the system. As I said, this may be a feature or a requested function later on, but for now, this at least lets you see when the last duration was that an asset was accessed. Now, from the standpoint of this number, any time a trade takes place on this coin, this number is reset. And you can always go into your log files and verify 
with the log what your last coin was. While I am here, I need to bring up another issue that really isn't a relay issue, but it does affect relay indirectly. Here is your previous balance and your new balance. This does sometimes also affect equilibrium. When it displays the balance. Sometimes the exchange does not update the numbers fast enough. And you will see the same balance twice, even though it is recorded properly on your wallet. This will update on its own and properly, and that's why it shows on every single line. So this can be cross verified for each and every transaction. With respect to the log file, every single order shows the new balance and the previous balance for the same reason. So that if there is lag in the system, it's easy to see. Now, even though this really isn't going to be a long video, the under the hood process of these updates has been quite extensive. So it's something to be aware of as you go through and update your code base. These changes will take effect, of course. And of course, the logging itself, you will see quite a few times where your process ID interblends and it can sometimes get confusing. This is where the list coin program can help out and make things easier which I have demonstrated before. So, that's pretty much the basic rundown of all of the various functions that have been updated and expanded upon without going into pretty much four years of programming. If you have any questions, of course, be sure to let me know either through the comment section of this video or from the support server itself. Before I sign off for the last time, I should say for this video, I do need to make clear that the asset counting system does not work in a distributed environment. Meaning, if you have three or four machines running Jackrabbit Relay, the asset management system only reserves a coin list on a single machine, not on across all of the machines. That is important to understand because it may become possible if you use a distributed network that there will be conflicts and problems. When I built the management system, I didn't want to build a tank in the process of managing a simple list. So a lot of work and effort went into the process to fine tune it as much as possible with as little code and overhead as possible. Exclusive access rights on a computer is an extremely delicate and difficult area to work in and it can very quickly turn into a nightmare. So 
that is one of the reasons why this does not yet support distributed systems. At some point in the future, it will most likely do so, but for now, I wanted this very simple. Now that's really it for this video. Short, sweet, and to the point, and really not much rambling. Which is probably a good thing. Until next time.